uh, first, I wanted to bring in Dr. D- Doug Inkley, Inkley, who is the senior scientist with the National Wildlife Federation, the National Wildlife Federation, nwf.org, and uh, the Twitter is at NWF. Uh, Dr. Inkley, welcome to the program. Hello, Tom. Uh, great to have you with us. Um, there is a new, well, we've been hearing for a couple of weeks now, actually, and we've had several people on this program, one who was a pilot who flew over it, another who was, who was uh, in a boat out in the Gulf, that there appear to be uh, spills coming out of the area where the Macondo well was, the, the, uh, the, the BP well that, that blew up and, and uh, murdered 11 men, um, uh, and not to mention a, a whole ecosystem. But apparently that's not the end of the story. In fact, that's not even the beginning of it. Yes, that's right. In fact, we had uh, a boat out there on Friday taking samples of the oil that's still being found in the Gulf of Mexico. There's a variety of sources, unfortunately, for where oil is coming from in the Gulf of Mexico. There's still a lot of wrecked equipment on the ground at the, at the bottom of the ocean, uh, at the site of the Macondo well. Uh, there is a lot of uh, drilling that occurs in that area and a lot of pipelines, and some of it is chronically leaking. We know that. That's what the National Wildlife Federation was out there Friday for, to look for some of the oil, take some samples of it to try to determine what its source was. There are also natural seepages which occur, but they're much smaller. Uh, they release much less oil than the spills that have been occurring, such as last year with the huge BP Gulf oil spill, the largest in our nation's history. Right. So what, what do Americans need to know about the fact that these... There's all these miles and miles and miles of pipeline and all, many, many wells there in the Gulf of Mexico, and that some of them are leaking uh, chronically, uh, to use your phrase. Well, what can be done about it? What do people know, need to know about it? I think what people need to know is that, as it stands right now, our oil and gas drilling regulations are not tight enough to prevent accidents like this BP oil spill from occurring. And since that time on land, we've had a number of oil spills. The Enbridge oil spill in Michigan last year. Uh, We had the Yellowstone River oil spill several months ago. Uh, These things continue. And obviously, the regulations are not tight enough. Let me give you an example of why. When the Yellowstone River oil spill occurred, there was suspicions that there might be a problem there. So the regulator stepped in, and the pipeline was temporarily closed down. After they determined that all federal regulations were being met, the pipeline reopened, and subsequently the spill occurred. Clearly, the regulations that exist today are not strong enough to prevent things like this from happening. So what the American people need to support and what Congress needs to do is support stronger oil and gas regulations. Congress has taken no action on that since Hmm. the oil spill uh, last year uh, in the Gulf of Mexico. So what specifically in those oil and gas regulations that should be stronger are you you and or the National Wildlife um, Federation? Well, there's a number of things, and I don't want to get into the technical details because it's quite complex, but one of the things that's not occurring right now is when there's a spill, the first responders on the scene, they really don't know what was spilled. They don't know what type of oil was in the pipeline. They don't know anything about it. And a lot of times chemicals are added to the oil to help it flow. Oil from different places has different characteristics. So when this Yellowstone spill occurred, Yellowstone River spill occurred this summer, the first responders really didn't know what they were dealing with. So one of the first things that has to happen is a right to know so that people know what they're dealing with. So we're talking about transparency on the part of the corporations that are doing the drilling. Transparency so that the first responders and the people that are living near these pipelines know what's going through the pipelines for their own safety and well-being. That just seems like common sense. Uh, you know, I, I, was that at, at one time part of the law? Was that part of the uh, uh, EPA or other regulations? Or has that never been part of the law? I'm not aware that that's ever been a part of the regulations. Uh, one of the problems that we're having now is some of the tar sands uh, oil that is coming down from Canada. It's much more corrosive than the oil that uh, used to be pumped. And so the problem is, is that it could make uh, these pipelines more vulnerable to leaks and, and spills and things of this type. So it is important to know what is being piped in these so that you can put in place the proper safety regulations. Right. And what's being done to that end? Well, not enough, uh, clearly. Uh, again, nothing has changed uh, in the last year since the BP oil spill. Congress hasn't taken any action. I'm concerned that they haven't taken any action to strengthen the oil and gas drilling regulations, and also they have not taken any action that would, in fact, put in place the, the fines that BP pays for the Gulf oil spill to put that back into the Gulf of Mexico for restoration. Right now, it goes elsewhere. It would not go back into the Gulf of Mexico. Where's the elsewhere? It's, it's just going into the federal treasury? I believe so. That's, that's right. Oh, that's nuts. What we need to do is, is BP, you know, had a lot of impact on that Gulf Coast ecosystem. The fines that they pay 
it's right for Congress to dedicate those fines under the Clean Water Act back into the Gulf of Mexico for restoration. That needs to happen. There's right. a hearing to mark up a bill uh, in the Senate later this week on Wednesday, and it's a bipartisan bill supported by a number of senators that would actually dedicate the, the funds from their fines uh, to Gulf Coast restoration, and we're strongly supportive of that. Why is it that we see uh, Republicans like Bobby Jindal and Democrats like Blanche Lincoln, um, you know, who represent or Mary Landrew, who represent Gulf Coast states, consistently working on the side of the oil companies as opposed to on the side of the, of the, uh, of the environment in that region and the people who make their living as part of that environment, the small you know, shrimpers and, and, and fishermen and things like that? Well, it's very clear that oil and gas is a tremendous economic driver for the communities uh, down in Louisiana and elsewhere along the coast. It brings in a, an enormous amount of money. But so does uh, commercial fishing, outdoor recreation, fishing, uh, recreational fishing, hunting, things of this type. And there needs to be a proper balance. And what we're concerned about here at the National Wildlife Federation is right now this balance continues to be skewed towards the oil and gas. Right. It's not giving proper consideration to other people who are being put out of their jobs, whether they sell seafood in a restaurant or, or, or at they actually fish for some of the fish in the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, Greg Pallast over the weekend, uh, he's apparently just finishing up a book on, on scandals of the oil industry around the world, including the United States, and uh, it referred to uh, CP, CPB or NPR as the National Petroleum Broadcasting, you know, basically that they weren't accusing them of not telling the story uh, because they're taking large donations. I know I can't turn on a TV uh, and see any, pretty much any channel and not see an ad for big oil, big gas, the coal, uh, the, the, the gas fracking companies, so-called clean coal, there ain't no such thing. Um, is this a way of basically handing money off to media organizations and saying, uh, please don't discuss our problems? Well, it's clear to me that the large contributions that the oil and gas industry is making to individual campaigns as, as they run for office uh, is probably making a big difference. They have much more of a capability with the big dollars that they bring in uh, to influence these members of Congress or prospective members of Congress than do uh, people like a, a recreational fisherman such as myself or, or a shrimp fisherman. Sure. Clearly they're biasing it that way. One of the things that concerns me is that so much remains hidden. I became extremely frustrated during the oil spill because even the information about how it was killing the birds that everybody owns, their, their, their public property, how, how the oil spill was impacting the birds, the sea turtles, etc., was being kept secret. We weren't being told how much oil was being spilled, how many dead sea turtles right. there were, how many dead birds there were. But to what extent is that the result of a, of a bought and paid media? Well, I like to think of the media as giving the information out there that uh, comes from all sides. And it took the media, actually, I have to give the media credit, because what happened uh, during the oil spill was a lot of them dug and dug and dug until finally the administration was forced and the oil companies were forced to give out some of this information. Hmm. Okay. Well, that's, that's good news. Uh, Dr. Doug Inkley, he is the senior scientist with the National Wildlife Federation. NWF.org is the website, Twitter at NWF. Greg, thank you very much. Thank you, Tom. Great to have you with us on the program today. Uh, this is uh, one of many issues, this and Fukushima, that we must not forget. We do so at our peril.